Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Larry Hirsch. I'm uh, from Yale University in the US, and I will explain to you why cryptogenic status epilepticus should be treated with immunomodulation as soon as it is diagnosed. These are my disclosures, none of which are relevant for this talk. So these will be my main points. First is that cryptogenic Norse, which includes fires, is very similar, if not identical, to Norse of known etiologies. Two, an overactive immune system or inflammatory response is usually, if not always, a major contributor to the refractoriness of status epilepticus in Norse. And there's abundant evidence that early immunotherapy is crucial in autoimmune encephalitis in general, including Norse. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, there is uh, published consensus definitions for both Norse and uh, fires, and I'll show you what those are. So Norse is a clinical presentation of new onset refractory status epilepticus, and it has to have no clear acute or active structural toxic or metabolic cause. And those can be identified usually in the first 24 hours, but always in the first couple of days. And it includes viral infections and autoimmune syndrome. So they can present as Norse. You may ultimately find an antibody and an explanation. And that would be, for example, anti-NMDA encephalitis presenting as Norse. Fires is a subcategory of Norse that requires a prior febrile infection. And it had to have been there uh, at least 24 hours prior to onset of refractory status. And both of these apply at all ages now, even though with most of the older literature, fires was used in children and Norse in adults, and now applies in all ages. So this was, uh, this still is probably the largest series of Norse. It was 130 cases from many centers by the Critical Care EEG Monitoring Research Consortium. And 52% of cases were completely cryptogenic. The other 48% might have had an explanation, and I'll show you what those were. So uh, they were, uh, 48% had some probable etiology. The vast majority of those were autoimmune or paraneoplastic, and only a few were considered infectious. And uh, in this study, they specifically compared the cryptogenic cases to one with known, the ones with known etiology. And they found no significant differences in the CSF findings, including the number of cells or the protein, in the EEGs, in the imaging or outcome, and only slight differences in the clinical features for example, the ones with hallucinations all ended up having NMDA. And the uh, quote from this was that CSF abnormalities, most often mild, occurred as frequently in cryptogenic cases as in cases with an identified etiology. And the other quote in the conclusion was, cryptogenic cases presented with clinical features similar, suggesting a similar etiology, it's possible that some of these cases correspond to autoimmune encephalitis associated with antibodies yet to be identified. And recent studies have shown intrathecal production of proconvulsant cytokines in the CSF of children with fires. Again, showing the importance of the immune system and immune activation in this syndrome. So the cryptogenic cases look very similar, if not identical to the ones with known etiology. And the etiologies when found are almost always uh, autoimmune. So what about immunologic findings in NOR? So there are extensive changes found first, just with status epilepticus in general, as listed here. However, in NOR specifically, there seems to be a marked upregulation of certain interleukins and other cytokines. And I've listed a bunch of the references for that. Uh, in one case, is they compared four, 14... Uh, pediatric cases of fires versus 14 with other inflammatory neurodiagnoses versus some other neuro controls. And they found many differences, but most strikingly in fires, there was a marked elevation of IL-6, IL-8, and CXCL-10. And these were most prominent in the CSF, also seen in the serum. And those are all pro-inflammatory markers. Some conclusions from experts who have written about this are that uh, fires, in particular, in this paper, was considered a genetically determined post-infectious cytokine-mediated disorder. Um, when looking at genetics, the only things that have been found seem to relate to the inflammatory response. So in this series, they, they um, 
found several differences, including ones in an uh, interleukin-1 related polymorphism. There are reports in the literature of anakinra, which is an anti-IL-1 agent, both in acute fires and chronic phases of epilepsy uh, after fires, and that's been shown in at least one adult as well. Uh, there are also reports in series of adults with Norse that tocilizumab, which is an anti-IL-6 agent, uh, is effective, and it was effective in six out of seven adults. And they also measured um, interleukin levels in that study, and many of the patients had very high CSF IL-6 levels. It was actually a mean of almost 900 in the seven Norse patients compared to a mean of 1.7, so a couple orders of magnitude difference. So it just shows the importance of the immune system and the inflammation in the pathophysiology of Norse. Uh, this was a very recent study that looked at CSF cytokines and chemokines in fires and compared it to several other conditions, including just febrile status epilepticus. And um, they found distinct and more prominent elevation in multiple cytokines and chemokines in fires. These were uh, less so in febrile status and much less so in epilepsy and other neurologic disorders. And the ones that were elevated are shown here. And again, as one example, the IL-6 was elevated in 83% of the fires cases, but only 25% of febrile status and 5% of chronic epilepsy. So it just shows it's not just from the status epilepticus itself. It's probably related to the refractoriness uh, in, their, in these patients. So what's the evidence that early immunotherapy helps in Norse in particular? Well, there are several small series, and Norse is fairly rare. Uh, there are not a lot of large series on this. But th in this paper of, of five patients, they concluded that early immunotherapy is associated with good outcomes in Norse. Uh, in this other one, they reviewed their own series as well as a review of the literature and found that immunotherapy was associated with better outcomes, 42% versus 20% and that was statistically significant. And they concluded in all patients with status refractory to initial treatment in whom an etiology is not immediately apparent, consider early administration of immunotherapy. So there's your expert opinion and someone who's published their own data and reviewed the literature on that. So what about autoimmune encephalitis in general? Since I've just shown that uh, Norse of unclear causes similar to those with known autoimmune encephalitis. Uh, so what's the data there? Well, there's extensive data that early immunotherapy is helpful and improves outcomes in those groups. Um, I just have a couple examples. So this was a paper from 2016 in JAMA Neurology that looked at cognitive deficits and structural hippocampal damage after anti-LGI1 encephalitis and they concluded that the latency between disease onset and initiation of immunotherapy was significantly correlated with verbal and visual spatial memory deficits. And you can see here the treatment delay and the delayed recall on a memory test. There's a very recent study at ant of anti-NMDA encephalitis that found that early second-line therapy led to improved episodic memory after recovering. There's a different paper from 2013 uh, looking at LGI-1 again, and this time they found that the time to recovery of baseline function was positively correlated with time to immunotherapy. Again, the earlier it was given, the better these patients did. Uh, this was a study, a very large one in Lancet Neurology of almost 600 patients with anti-NMDA encephalitis. And they found that early treatment, which meant either immunotherapy or tumor removal, was one of only two predictors of good outcome and very highly significant. And they also found if the first treatment failed, the second line immunotherapy improved outcome. So again, more evidence of the Im immunomodulatory treatments helping for all these autoimmune encephalitides. And the earlier they're given, the better the patients do. Uh, then there was a, a, actually a systematic review on this, looking at how to prognosticate in autoimmune encephalitis. And they looked at virtually everything you can measure in these patients, um, reviewing the, the world's literature on it. And their conclusion 
in the abstract is that a delay in immunotherapy contributed to a variety of worse outcomes for patients with different subsets of autoimmune encephalitis. And in the conclusion of the paper, they say delay in the commencement of immunotherapy is clearly an important prognostic factor. And this is a table from their paper. So this shows uh, all the different factors that might predict outcome, the number of studies that looked at them, and the number of studies that found a positive correlation. So you can see the vast majority of the ones that looked at delay in immunotherapy found it was indeed correlated with outcome. And that's a much higher uh, rate than any of the other features. The first number is the number of studies. The second is the number of completely independent studies, perhaps a better measure. So 12 out of 16 of those studies found that that was a predictor of outcome. Uh, this is a summary table of their conclusions they made. Uh, so for autoimmune encephalitis in general, and for the one subset that they had enough data, which is the NMDA receptor encephalitis, and whether these variables are likely or not likely to predict outcome. And the only one on here that is likely in both columns and in both conditions is delay in immunotherapy. So it really seems to be the most consistent predictor of poor outcome. Uh, just some other recent expert opinion. I looked for the most recent review I could find on Norse, uh, which is this one. I was not involved with this paper. And this is their algorithm. It says to uh, consider first-line immune therapies within the first week of onset in those with cryptogenic Norse with an incomplete response to status epilepticus treatment. Um, and they, in their text, they say early immune therapy is recommended by experts as delaying treatment may contribute to worse outcome. So what my opponent may point out a couple of things. Uh, the main one being that there are no prospective randomized trials that have proven that these uh, immune therapies help and they do have potential harms. Uh, but I will point out that lack of evidence does not suggest that something is not efficacious. And there's this uh, fascinating paper that drives this point home. This is the actual title of a paper from the British Medical Journal. It says, parachute use to prevent death and major trauma related to gravitational challenge, mostly meaning skydiving. It was a systematic review of randomized trials. And in this evidence-based guideline, they found no class one evidence of benefit of parachutes. And uh, their final conclusion in the abstract is that Everyone might benefit if the most radical protagonists of evidence-based medicine organized and participated in a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled crossover trial of the parachute. Just making the point, there are many things that are unproven, some of which should not even be tested because it's so clear. I'm not saying that the immune therapy should not be tested. They probably should. Um, but again, the lack of quality studies does not suggest that they're that they don't work. And this is from that paper, parachutes reduce the risk of injury, but their effectiveness has not been proved with randomized controlled trials. So conclusions, cryptogenic Norse is very similar, if not identical to Norse of known etiology, which is almost always an autoimmune process. Inflammation plays a key role in the pathogenesis of refractory status epilepticus in these patients with Norse and the subset of fires. Immune modulators have been proven to help with autoimmune encephalitis, and the benefits of early treatment have been repeatedly demonstrated in all subtypes of autoimmune encephalitis that have been studied. There's substantial evidence, though mostly from small series of patients at this point, that immunotherapy helps in Norse, especially when given early. Another point is that there really is no time to wait for the results of autoimmune investigations before beginning treatment. So we usually send them all off. And before we have any of those results back, we're starting our immunotherapy. Uh, we usually start it by day three of their hospital stay. We, we've excluded all other easily identified causes by then. So until there's evidence to the contrary, cryptogenic refractory status epilepticus should be treated with immunomodulation as soon as it is diagnosed. And I, uh, in other words, don't forget your parachute. Um, so I'd like to thank my opponent for uh, 
agreeing to take on the almost indefensible position on the other side of this argument. And with that, I will thank you for your attention.